so everybody was asking, where is God? They were asking, does it really matter if we serve God or not? Does it really matter if we honor this God or not? Because some of them had reached a level where they were losing faith and their faith in God. The Hebrew Bible takes the format of a dialogue, a hypothetical dialogue that the prophet writes, which has gone first of all, charging Israel with a breach of their covenant relationship with him. The second stage is this dialogue that we find in that people give a response. So God makes a charge, God makes an accusation, and the people respond in form of a question, demanding to know why God is accusing them the way he is accusing them. Rather, the people demanding for evidence. When God says, I have loved you, then the people say, show us how you have loved us. When God says, you have despised me, the people say, how have we despised you? And so it is accusation and the counter uh, accusation in regard to the money of the evidence. And so in the first five verses, they replied to God's pronouncement of love to them. Where have you loved us? In other words, prove it. Where is the evidence of your love to us in our lives? Then we find that the third part of, part of the dialogue is that God gives you that in his evidence and he then pronounces his judgment upon the people for breaking their covenant relationship with him. Now we saw yesterday that the first symptomatic sign, the first sign that shows that you have become spiritually bankrupt is when you live a life insensitive of the love of God in your life. Listen children of God. The first symptomatic sign of any Christian, of any child of God, is when you live your life without realizing the blessings of God and what God is doing in your life. It's when you wake up and you don't appreciate that it's God who has woken you up. It's when you get a job and earn a salary and you don't recognize that it is God. the divine love. This evening, I want to show you the second symptom of backsliding. The first symptom is when you become what? Insensitive to the acts of God and the love of God in your life. The second symptom is we see here God is creating a legal case to these people of why he is going to judge them if they do not repent. The first was their insensitivity to his divine love and the second symptomatic sign now is not just their doubt of his love but God accuses them of actually despising his name. Hello? Are you following? What is the first symptom? Insensitivity. They are not sensitive. They are not, they don't care. They don't care. It doesn't matter that God is blessing them. They don't feel it. They don't know it. They don't care about it. But the second one, and this is one of the worst ones, is that these people have reached a level where they are no longer Honoring the name of God. In fact, if I can go further, 
they are despising the name of who? Of God. If you look at verse 6, verse 11, and verse 14 of Malachi chapter 1, God keeps saying my name. He mentions my name. Again, he mentions my name. The reason is, in the biblical language, his name is Euphemism. Another term simply, his name is synonymous with his character and his reputation. And God depends on how his people represent him to proclaim his character to the world. Did you get that? How you carry yourself, how you, 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 you live your Christian way, that is how God is known to the world. When you stop praising God, when you stop living as a Christian, when you stop honoring this God, you are despising the name of the Holy God. And that is why you find Him saying, and I want us to go back to, the, to, to where we read. He begins by saying, A son honors his father. Did you hear that? Then he says, If I am your father, because you come to me and you pray, Our father, which art in heaven. Don't you pray like that? So he, he, the God is asking, A son honors his father. Then he says, If I am your father, Where is my honor? I want to ask you, those of you who are lucky and you still have your parents, I assume your parent comes to America and you are taking them to the store to buy them clothes so that they can come to church next Sabbath. Your father came from Kenya. Your mother came from Kenya. I don't know what you lost your father the other day, so for you it doesn't matter now. You, you feel like I wish he was here. But assume your parents come to America and you are taking them to the, to the store. Where do you think you will take them to get them a suit? I'm, I'm asking you. Where do you think you will take them? Will you take them to a thrift store, Goodwill or something? Where you will find a suit worth $15 and you buy your father a suit of $15 and then you come here on Sabbath and say, Praise the Lord, children of God. My father came from Kenya. He is here. Can he stand and greet you up with a suit of five dollars? No. Where will you take him? You will take him to a good store. G. K and G or G and G, whatever it is. Or, or Coles. Or some, some, some nice store. Where you will spend some nice, nice dollars. To treat your father because he has come to America and he is the one who, who, who took you to school. You are earning money because of what he did. So God is asking, if, I, if you do that to your father because you honor your father and I am your heavenly father, where is my honor? Where is my honor? Because he says, when, he, when it, is, it is you treating your father, you take him to the best store. But in, when it comes to me, and you have come to church to worship me, you reach into your pocket and you touch whatever, a few dollars or one dollar that you find there, and you throw it under the basket. If I am your father, where is my honor? That's the question he's asking. Oh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me give you another example. Because the Bible says, He says, A servant honors who? His master. His master. If I am your master, where is my honor? Suppose you have a maid. A girl who works for you in your house. And after three months, she says, I want to go and greet my mother. And at home, she finds the mother has planted some nice uh, pumpkins. And there is one pumpkin that a cow was passing. 
and stepped on that pumpkin and it looked something like this. And there are others that are round and big and nice. Which one do you think this girl will bring for you? The one that the cow stepped on and is doing like this, is appearing like this, or the one that is round and big and nice? Which one do you think your mate will bring for you? Huh? The best one. Or if you go to work tomorrow and you decide to take a gift to your, to your boss, will you put two dollars in the envelope and give it to your boss and say, Boss, here is a gift card, a gift card of two dollars. Is that what you will do? A servant honors his master. God is saying, If I am your master, where is my home? People honor their friends. People honor their friends, right? Like today, I called you here for the feast of the word of God. Somebody else called you here for the feast of Mandazi. And a little shaking of shoulders. We are in separate rooms. I'm in the church. You are in the, in the social hall. If you compare, there are some people even seated there doing nothing. They know we are here. But because, because you honor your friends more than you do what? Than you honor God. If there was a baby shower today, people would stream to that baby shower and they would never happen. God is asking, if I am your God, where is my honor? That is what. God is accusing us. So the accusation is right. Why have you taken? You know, let me tell you, my dear friends, there is a reason why God called the nation of Israel. He called the nation of Israel, gave them commandments, that if they followed these commandments, if they obeyed these commandments, if they worshipped God the way God wanted them to, to be worshipped, the way God wanted to be worshipped, God was going to make these people the envy of the nations. God was going to make these people the heads and not the tail. God was going to use these people that when people see them, they will be able to say, this is how God blesses a person whom he is well pleased. You remember the story of Esther? Remember the story of Esther? There was that vice president, vice uh, the deputy prime minister, who goes very early in the morning to get permission so he could kill who? Mordecai. What happens? It turns out that Esther shows up and she says, can I speak to you, king? And the king gives her permission. And she says, me and my people, we are in trouble. Who is that? This man here. And that guy is forced to take Mordecai in the king's horse, take him through the city, leave him with a loudspeaker, announcing, this is how, this is what the king does to a person he is placed about. This is what the king does and Mordecai is sitting there, dressed in the king's dress. He is the envy of the city. He is enjoying the glory. He is enjoying the power because the king is pleased with him. Dear friends, let me tell you one thing. If the children of Israel had obeyed God and had done and honored him the way he wanted to be honored, God would have elevated them and made them the best of the best, the sweet of the sweet, the great of the great, the envy of all the nations. Can I tell you something, my dear brothers and sisters? If you honor God faithfully, if you do what God says according to His, according to his word, you treat Him like a father, you treat Him like a God, you treat Him like a master, God 
will use you to bring honor to his name. Hallelujah. Amen. God will use you to bring honor and glory to his name. When Jimmy Carter was president, on several occasions he spent the night. So he picked a home at random and he sent word there that I'm coming to sleep there tonight. How is it if the president came to visit you in your home? So suppose that, suppose that the president and his wife decided to come to your home and the big evening arrives. Crowds line the street as the presidential limousine pulls up in front of your house. Frank, escorted by police and motorcycles, squad cars and secret service agents, the president and his wife emerge from the limousine, wave to the crowds as the, as the news photographers walk to your front door. You open the door wearing dirty, dirty jeans and a torn t-shirt and say, oh hi Mr. President, I have been working out in the garden. As the president steps into the cluttered living room and you say, sorry about the mess. My wife got in close with soap operas on TV this afternoon. She didn't do cleaning. But dinner is almost ready. She's heating up leftovers in the microwave right now. Hope you don't mind the paper plates, Mr. President. How do you think that will feel? That will be absurd. Even if you were poor, you could have even gone to the neighbor to borrow some nice plates to feed, to use to feed the president. Because the president is visiting your house today. That is why Malachi is saying, you bring sick animals and you offer them as sacrifices. You bring lame ones and you give them as sacrifices. Try doing the same to your governor. Try. Who is your governor here in, uh, in Minnesota? You are calling him here. Tell him you want to buy a church and he gives you the money to buy a church and then it is time for you to go and bring him a gift. You go bring a sick animal and offer it to, 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 to your governor. Do you think he will appreciate it? He may even withdraw that check because he thinks you are dishonoring him. People of God, why have we treated God so casually and so carelessly that if the governor were to come here, we would all come early enough and wait for him. But if it is God who is coming, we come and walk to church as we wish. Well, what have we done with our walls of service to our God? God is asking. The president, the governor, deserves more than leftovers. So that's the Lord. He is a great king. His name is to be feared among the nations. Surely, nobody will dare to serve God with left offers. But Malachi says, that is what you have done. The priests of his day were doing just that. The people who bring an unblemished lamb to offer a sacrifice at the temple, the priest will reason. It doesn't make sense to slaughter this perfectly good lamb. After all, it is just going to be burned on the altar. Let us, let us sell it for a decent price and substitute a slightly blemished lamb that is cheaper because that is good stewardship. Many of us behave like this. We behave like the priests during the days of Malachi. There's a book I've been uh, reading called God's Passion for His Glory, written by John Piper. The book says, it contains essays from Jonathan Edwards. The book says, the end of which God created the world. He makes or he summarizes what the children of God ought to be and what the children of God ought to do. He 
He says, God elects his people before the foundations of the world for his glory. He creates humankind for his glory. He chooses Israel for his glory. He delivers them from Egypt for his glory. He restores them from after exile for his glory. He sends his son to confirm his trustworthiness and so the Gentiles will also glorify him for his glory. He puts his son to death to display the glory of his vindicated righteousness. He commands his people to do things for his glory. He will send his son a second time to receive us to his glory. And in the end, he will fill the earth with knowledge of his glory. So our aim as God's people should be to glorify God by loving him above all. By loving one another above all. By loving one another as we love ourselves. And by proclaiming the gospel among the nations, the great commission, so that all peoples will glorify his great name. So point number one that we can gather from that passage, and I've been explaining it, but let me mention for those who are writing, Malachi says we are created to promote God's glory among the nations. We must honor him by giving him the best of our lives. We must honor him by giving him the best of our lives. Point number two. As God's people, as God's people, we are often blind as to how we dishonor him. This message applied to the whole nation, but it was especially aimed at the priests, the spiritual leaders, those of us who lead the church, especially need to ponder about these things. When the Lord confronted them through Malachi, they didn't get it. They asked God, how have we despised your name? Six and verse seven. They looked at all their activities. They were busy offering sacrifices and the leading people in worship. What was the problem? The problem was that they were not doing what they did with that God word focus. They were not offering their sacrifices to please God. They were not focused on magnifying His, his name. They were bored with the whole thing. Their attitude reflected. So God's purpose is to glorify his name among the nations. As his people and especially as leaders, we are often blind to how we dishonor him. Thus the crucial question becomes, what does it mean to honor the Lord of our lives? Honoring, honoring the Lord means, honoring the Lord means giving the best of our lives. We should give God the best in terms of cost. You know, salvation is a free gift. We cannot earn it or pay for it. You can only accept it freely. But it cost God the life of His beloved Son. Once you accept such a precious gift, it demands everything you have. Once you know that you have been saved freely, once you know that it took God to offer His Son as a sacrifice, you will be the demands that you give God. You respond to Him with everything you have. When you recognize that you are not your own, you are bought with a price, and that all you have has been freely given to you by God. How can you hold back your time and resources and your abilities and your talents from Him who has loved you? But these priests in Malachi's day who are giving God the left of us. They are, they are no use for our blind, 
And so they took it to God. They had no use for a blind, lame, or sick animal because they didn't have a use for a blind or sick or lame animal. They didn't want to plan it. You've got to focus and say, it is the revival week. Let me go to church and be revived. Let me go to church and be blessed. You cannot say, today I am not going to work. It is my own. Pastor speak in times you are not even hearing. This is what these people, this was their attitude. They didn't have no use for the blind, no use for the lame, no use for the sick animal, so they gave it to who? To God. God tells them that he would rather that they close the doors of the temple than to have them offer these cheap sacrifices to him. Read verse, verse 10 of Malachi chapter 1. He says, oh, how do I get somebody to go and shut the doors of the temple instead of people coming in so casually, instead of people worshipping me so carelessly, instead of people doing things they are doing so indifferently, close and shut the door so that nobody can come in to worship because I'm not pleased with what, with what they are doing. Are you hearing, children of God, what God is saying? He says, this is what he is demanding, but basically this is what he is saying, that on Sabbath I should pass with a game here, asking him, how much did you give one dollar coca and how much did two dollars get out of here? How much? I, I should, what time did you come? Eleven o'clock, go, I close the show, that, that is what God is, because you are taking him so carelessly and so indifferently, somebody should shut the door. So that only those who value the worship of God, who are out to honor God, can do what? Can worship Him. Are you seeing how serious God is taking these things? He's very serious about it. That He's concerned that these people that I have loved so much, these people that I have chose so much, these people that I have blessed so much, why are they taking me so casually and so indifferently? Giving God what you really don't need anyway is not giving at all. Did you hear that? Giving God what you really don't need anyway is not giving at all. Is not giving at all. Second Samuel 24 verse 24. David said, because he was offered a place to build an altar. And they offered this place to him for free. But David says, no chance. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God, which costs me nothing. I will not take an altar for free and pretend to be honoring, honoring God using an altar that has been given me for free. I must put in my money and that money must cost me something. And so David refused until he bought it. Campbell Morgan observes, sacrilege is centered in offering God something which costs nothing because you think God is worth nothing. When you begin to think that God is worth nothing, so you begin offering Him nothing. We should give God the best in terms of quality. The Lord only wants unblemished lamps on His altar. If it is a reject, if it isn't good enough for the Lord, as he sarcastically asks, could you give this blind, sick, or lame sheep to your governor? Could he be pleased with you? If you couldn't give such cheap child to your fathers, to your masters, to your bosses, to your governors, why do you think you can give me junk? God is asking. Again, it is better that your junk gets recycled for your use and to give it for God. There is a rich woman who had about a missionary in Africa and she decided that she was going to send him a gift. But because she didn't want to lose so much, so she bought uh, tea bags. She could use the tea bag, have her 
actually use the tea, tea bag, instead of throwing it away, she could dry the tea bags and then pack them and then do what? Send them to Africa. After she has done what? After she has used it. One wonders, surely. Surely. We should give God quality because He has given us His power. Lastly, we should give God the best in terms of priorities. God's word was not top priority for these priests and for the people during the times of Malachi. They had better ways to use unblemished lambs than to put them on God's altar. God had said that they should honor him above all else by their worship. This included obeying his commandments for sacrifices. But God's priority was not their priority. Worshipping God by offering unblemished sacrifices, sacrifices just wasn't all that important to them. By showing contempt for what which God valued, they were showing contempt for God himself. Let me break it down simply by stating this. Their problem really was not their giving frank. Their problem is they had stopped obey the commandments of God. They had to stop worshipping the God who loved them. Let me tell you, my dear brothers, when you read the word of God, when you pray, when you seek the face of God, surely it will come naturally that you will now obey Him. But when you don't read the word of God, when you don't listen to the word of God, when you don't pray, then you reach a level where anything is anything. And so God does not become a priority in your life. It is the word of God, it is from the word of God that you will know the will of God. But if you don't value it, if you don't attend seminars, if you don't attend revivals, how will you be changed? How will you be converted? How will you be reformed? This is what he is telling these people. Your priority should be obeying the commandments because it is the commandment which will tell you how you are supposed to sacrifice me, sacrifice for me, and how you are supposed to worship me in truth and in spirit. Seek ye first the kingdom of God 
and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. May God bless us. May God bless you. In Jesus' name. How many here want to say, help us to set our spiritual priorities right? If that is your prayer, lift up your hand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we lift these hands up because we want to set our priorities right. Like the people of uh, Malachi, the walls of our service to you are completely down and broken. We are reproach and ashamed with the people who surround us. You meant to make us the head and not the tail. You meant to make us shining light to our neighbors. But Lord, our neighbors are doing better than we are doing. They are blessed more than we are blessed because we have abandoned our worship. We have abandoned your commandments. We have abandoned your, your ways. We have abandoned the things that matter. Lord, we lift our hands and say, please forgive us. Help us to set our spiritual priorities right. Begin to rebuild our walls of service by honoring you instead of dishonoring you. Because when we honor you, as we have seen, we will be honoring ourselves. Because you will lift us and your name will be glorified. Bless us 